2017 will bring modest payment increases for all Social Security recipients. The average monthly payment will increase to $1,360 for single recipients and about $2,260 for married couples. But that's not all the good news coming from Washington these days. Social Security recipients who want or need to work just got a helping hand from Washington. Those people, who want or need to work, will now be able to earn more in 2017 without affecting their benefits. Those under 65 can earn up to $16.920 this year. Those who are turning 66 can earn as much as $44.880, up $3,000 from last year. In the past, if you worked and received benefits you faced penalties if you earned too much. Those penalties are going down this year, reflecting the new reality that Americans are working much later than before. $1 in benefits will be withheld for every $2 over the maximum earnings for those under age 65. For those 66, but not yet full retirement age, 66 years, 2 months, $1 for every $3 earned over the limit will be held back. Once full retirement age is reached, there is no limit on what one can earn. Also, any money previously withheld will be returned. The maximum benefit payment a person at full retirement age will get is going up to $2,687. However, that payment could increase by more, if retirement is delayed until age 67. What do you think about this? Comment below and share this story on Facebook or Twitter to spread our word. Breaking Barack Hussein Obama just made major announcement. Former President Barack Obama made his first political appearance since leaving office in January at a private fundraiser for the National Democratic Redistricting Committee, NDRC. The event was held to raise money for the effort of Democrats to take back power after getting destroyed in November. It was held in a private home and was attended by Obama's former Attorney General Eric Fast and Furious Holder and The Walking Dead, Nancy Pelosi. Holder is currently leading the NVRC. Holder is spreading his anti-Trump garbage all over the country and is holding meetings with liberal lawyers and Antifa rioters in San Francisco and other liberal cities. Holder is leading the charge to keep fighting President Donald Trump and his administration. How productive! What a filthy, racist pile of trash! He Democrat Party is in shambles. They have no positive ideas or message so they are focused on their ridiculous resistance effort. What a mess! Prior to leaving his post as America's 44th president, Obama stated that he would make redistricting his top priority during his post-White House career, Breitbart reports. Restoring fairness to our democracy by advocating for fairer, more inclusive district maps around the country is a priority for President Obama, his spokesman Kevin Lewis said in a statement on his behalf on Monday, according to the Associated Press. In 2016, Holder expressed his interest in working towards redistricting efforts that favor his party. American voters deserve fair maps that represent our diverse communities and we need a coordinated strategy to make that happen," Holder said. This unprecedented new effort will ensure Democrats have a seat at the table to create fairer maps after 2020. The National Census Bureau redraws the lines of the 435 congressional districts every 10 years. The Republican Party currently holds power in 32 out of 50 states. The AP notes that Democrats lost more than 1,030 seats in state houses, governor's mansions, and Congress during Obama's presidency. However, the party has launched a new effort to keep his legacy alive by supporting at least 20 alumni of the Obama administration who are running for political office to secure his name. Many of these candidates are running in California which has voted for the Democrats in every presidential election since 1992, and which is seen as the headquarters of the resistance movement progressives have waged against President Trump. What a freaking joke! Filthy scumbags just get lost you racist communists!
Hillary is finished. This famous actor just leaked her worst nightmare on live TV. Hillary Clinton has piled on to the bandwagon recently, calling for historic statues to come down. But actor Scott Bio just leaked something about Hillary that she didn't want getting out. Bio was a guest on Jesse Waters' show last night, and he didn't hold back. He exposed Hillary Clinton for who she really is and it's worse than anyone imagined. Waters brought up the issue of Confederate statues being torn down and Bio pointed out that Hillary Clinton's mentor was a grand dragon in the KKK. Do we get rid of the William Jefferson Clinton Presidential Library simply because President Clinton's wife Hillary lavished praise on former KKK member Robert Byrd? Bio asked. What Bio said exposes the Hillary and Bill sick hypocrisy and everyone in America needs to see it. I'm for letting you live your life, I just try to live my life the best that I can, Bio said. You have your views? Love it. I want to hear about it, as soon as you get violent I'm out. I don't care what side you're on. Huge news just broke about Bill Clinton, he makes major announcement, no one saw this coming. Since previous President Clinton left office in 2001, we were all trusting that he and Hillary would, as Barack and Michelle ought to, step away unobtrusively from open life and appreciate the life of retirement. Lamentably, that is not the situation. Rather, we're passed over exposed to the Clintons, as Hillary has now made two fizzled endeavors to wind up the president, and Bill has attempted to raise money for their slush support known as the Clinton Foundation. Be that as it may, it's not over for these Clintons. As Hillary has as of late reported her arrangements to bring cash up in talking expenses for a political activity advisory group, Bill Clinton has his very own few arrangements. What's more, that is, to compose a novel. Maybe composing a legitimate and later collection of memoirs would demonstrate excessively, as Bill's adventures in the current over a wide span of time may uncover two recent money skeletons. So fiction is a protected place for him. From right wing news. Many people have been hoping that, with Hillary Clinton's devastating loss in November, the Clintons would finally retire from the public eye. But that appears to not be true. Hillary has been making public speeches again, and now, Bill Clinton has just announced some new plans of his own. Clinton said he is writing his first novel, alongside best selling author James Patterson. The book, titled The President is Missing, will be released in June of 2018 and will be jointly published by Alfred A. Knopf and Hachette, Clinton and Patterson's respective publishers. So far, not much is known about the plot of the novel. While the fictional president will be at the center of the story, all that has been said so far is that it will be a unique amalgam of intrigue, suspense and behind-the-scenes global drama from the highest corridors of power. For his part, Clinton has spoken enthusiastically about the book. Working on a book about a sitting president, drawing on what I know about the job, life in the White House, and the way Washington works, has been a lot of fun, he said in a statement. And working with Jim has been terrific. I've been a fan of his for a very long time. Maybe composing this novel will keep Bill occupied while Hillary is away on her talking visits to raise money. In any case, this book might be a sort of chronicled fiction, however, will most likely have more truth in it than Bill's indictment hearing in Congress. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Immediate prosecution for Obama, Germany found out what he did. President Donald Trump promised Americans that he will solve every problem. Our country was stuck in the middle of nowhere, and Barack Obama didn't even move a finger to improve it. The former president had other things on his mind, but luckily he is no longer responsible for our country. But, he won't get away with the things he did in the past eight years. People are still talking about Obama's wiretapping scandal. The former president set up an entire network with the ultimate goal to catch a few big bugs. He wiretapped Trump Tower and pretty much every location President Trump goes to. But, 
President Trump wasn't the only person Obama targeted. We still don't know the exact number of Obama's victims, but it's more than clear that President Trump was his main target. Obama used the help of his staffers and several major institutions to play his little spy game. The world learned about this, and Obama was caught in one of the biggest scandals ever. Democrats came up with the worst excuse ever, and said that Obama only targeted people who seemed to be dangerous during the presidential elections. The former president is out of the Oval Office, and he may face a lawsuit for his illegal actions. Guess what? The wiretapping isn't the only thing that worries Obama at the moment. WikiLeaks confirmed that Obama spied on several foreign countries, including Germany. The CIA even used the German facility of Frankfurt to set up its hacking base. WikiLeaks released documents according to which Frankfurt was the remote base for Obama's spying. So, Obama won't get away with this that easily. He has to bear the consequences of his actions, and the clock has started ticking. We can only hope that justice will find its way out. Americans will never forget the terrible things that happened under Obama. It's time for something good to happen. What do you think about the latest information on Obama's spying? Do you think Obama could end up in jail for spying on foreign countries? How will the whole spy game end? Obama realizes he's not welcome in America anymore. President Obama has taken a break from hobnobbing with celebrities and once again thrown himself into D.C. politics. The former president headlined a Democratic fundraiser last week that was attended by senior party members. While he was in office Obama tried to portray himself as an everyman, a guy that you could grab a beer with, but the second that he left office he sloughed off that persona. He's spent the past few months touring the world with a revolving cast of celebrities and staying in ultra-luxurious accommodations. Obama's popularity has swelled slightly after he left office, as people began to forget what a horrendous job he did. However, there are Americans who were never swayed by ex-commander-in-chief's silvery rhetoric. Attorney General Eric Holder and Representative Nancy Pelosi were both present at last week's fundraiser. Democrats hope to rig the upcoming redistricting efforts in their favor. They have to do something desperate if they want to have any hope of winning. It's a sign of how few viable presidential candidates exist among the left that they have to keep trotting out Obama. As Hillary Clinton's defeat amply demonstrated, Obama doesn't have that much influence left with the average American. He told them to vote for Clinton and instead, they voted for President Trump. The Daily Mail reports. The 435 congressional districts that elect lawmakers to the U.S. House of Representatives are redrawn every 10 years following the national census. Local legislatures, and not the federal government or the U.S. Congress, redraw these boundaries. Republicans currently control the legislatures in 32 of the nation's 50 states. If Democrats could redraw congressional districts to suit themselves they'll have a much easier time winning future elections. Don't be fooled by Obama. He's a masterful speaker in a live setting but often when you reflect upon his words you find that they have had little bearing on either his actions, or the policies that he proposed.